you know, it's it's a bit of a personal um, story in my life. Um, I don't know how much time we have. I mean, just very briefly, um, you know, I, I grew up in the church, but pretty much from my junior high and high school and during my junior high and high school years, I drifted far from the church. And, um, and when I was away at college in my first year of college and I was going through, you know, sort of a spiritual crisis, if you will, um, what some might call an existential crisis, um, and really kind of at a crossroads in my life and, and, and asking a lot of those really deep essential questions that we all at some point ask, you know, what's the purpose of my life worth, you know, what, what is the meaning of truth? Is there life after death? You know, what is the purpose of all of this? And during that struggle, I was sent, um, this was back in 1989. I was a freshman in college. Um, I was sent the first volume of the, the life and miracles of Pope Carlos the sixth that had been published in English. And at that time, having been sort of far away from the church for so many years, I had never heard of him. I mean, I think I recall, you know, my dad having a picture of him on his desk at home, but never, you know, thinking twice about who is this person. Um, and I, I was very much just struck by his image on the cover of that, um, of that book. And that image is actually in the, in the, in the, in the introductory pages of, of my book. Mm -hmm. It's that black and white sketch of him sort of, you know, just the um, the picture of his of his face with the um, with the um, the patriarchal sort of throne uh, um, on his head, um, the crown, I should say. And you know, I think I was just curious more than anything. Well, who is this person? What are they talking about? Miracles and and well, what year I was, is this? This was back in 1989. 1989. Yeah. So his popularity hadn't hadn't been. Had it come to the states? Was he popular here at that time, or I, I think or, for the people who lived in Egypt, of course, mm -hmm. they had known and and the stories of his miracles were already being published in Arabic. But for English speakers and for you know youth of my generation, we knew nothing about him. Mm -hmm. um, I certainly hadn't hadn't heard of him, or you know, and and just opening that that book and reading, you know, through some of the stories. I was overwhelmed. I was overwhelmed with with a sense of God's love and God's presence and His proximity to humanity through this saint. And I was I was captivated by the idea that somebody had lived in our generation and my parents' generation and had such a close relationship with God and and you know and God had used to to do such mighty deeds you know um, to not just hundreds but thousands of people. And I think just that notion of God's proximity and the intensity of that love was something that hit me very hard. And I went through, you know, a, a, a sort of, you know, period of repentance. I, I remember that that week that I read that book, I, I cried a lot and I, I um, sort of turned my life around. And, you know, that's sort of what brought me back into the life of the church. Since that time, of course, uh, he's been my patron saint. He's been, you know, he's, he's the source of my repentance. And um, so he's been my intercessor ever since. And I've always sort of, as a, as, a, as a matter of gratitude to the saint for what he did in my life, I promised that I would make his name known to my generation and the generation after. And so that's, you know, kind of how the stories on Facebook started and um, and ultimately this book okay. is part of that. I hope a small contribution for that.